Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. I'm Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales of uh, Charlotte Products in Canada. Uh, today is Friday, July the 3rd, um, 2020, going fast as usual. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody um, in Canada, uh, obviously, uh, hopefully they had a happy uh, uh, July 1st day, have fell on a Wednesday this year. And of course, the U.S., our friends in the U.S. there, July 4th. Uh, and it happened to be, hopefully, a very happy, uh, safe, social distance. Uh, holiday there so stay safe uh, today's remarks uh once again this week, um, the news is ramping up. Uh, the WHO director ha had a very somber um, uh, message to us this week uh, and deep concern about the increased speed and of the infection rate um, globally. It seems to be a resurgence going on uh, at a rapid pace in many parts of the U.S. Uh, businesses that have recently opened in North America are now being shut down again because of the risk and the spikes. Uh, I think uh, just uh, I think midweek this week uh, the U.S. lost an additional 5,000 people in one day, uh, and that, that's certainly not the direction we want to go. I think uh, the U.S. Uh, beaches, the majority of those will be closed uh, today, as, as or sorry, tomorrow, uh, the July 4th, uh, and uh, and anyone that isn't wearing a mask or social distancing, I guess they're subject to fines and things, at least that's the rumor so far. Uh, our efforts to date have merely slowed the virus, um, but it hasn't even been close to, uh, to being over. That virus is still out there, uh, and it's surging on, and probably it even could be uh, developing immunities to the, to the things that we're actually doing there so uh, we've been speaking about a potential second wave um through all of our webinars here. In fact, our predictions, my personal predictions, uh, going from what the scientists have said and things, we're saying that the second wave is probably around fall, maybe October, November, somewhere around there. Uh, but all of a sudden, the scientists are starting to say, hey, I think this may be coming a little faster than what we're predicting, and we need to prepare. So what we do know for certain is, um, is, is that we don't know what it will do next. Uh, but the bottom line is we've all got to continue you to protect public health there so as far as social hygiene goes obviously summer is here the hot weather is here uh, that is certainly having an impact on social distancing uh, we've worked witnessed uh, my family and I have witnessed uh, uh, you know, several cities and towns and beaches just being overwhelmed with the population, with people, restaurants, bars, the traffic on the highways, the stores are overpopulated, uh, and there is really a lack of social distancing. Some people wear masks, some people don't. You're back in a grocery store, people are bumping into you now. Uh, so all of a sudden there's a disconcern, uh, which is not really uh, the, the best thing for any one of us. As I said a couple of weeks ago, I mean, you want to look in the mirror because it's up to us to, to actually control it there. Our critical uh, um, you know, role in pre-planning, you've got to review your inventory levels for disinfectants and pandemic supplies. I think we thought things were over um, with all of these sort of uh, red flags that are coming. I would ensure that now's the time to have extra on hand. Uh, it will be more difficult to get uh, pandemic supplies and sanitizers and disinfectants we're predicting towards the fall, maybe even uh, in, in the next 30 to 60 days. Some of the school boards in Ontario, Canada have actually mandated a one to two months supply of those specific pandemic and disinfectant cleaners and hand sanitizers and masks and things immediately on hand in every single school. So that alone, just from the education sector accounts, is a big ramp up in orders and demand, which, uh, you know, some suppliers are going to have difficulty filling there. So so ramp up your cleaning and your disinfecting protocol. Ramp up your frequencies of cleaning. Continue to do what you, you're doing. Uh, wash your hands. Use alcohol-based uh, uh, alcohol hand sanitizer uh, that's registered when required. When you don't have soap and water, when you come in, into contact with other people and things like that and follow the guidelines of public health so really wherever you are whatever you can do um, it is a little sombering message that I have today there but unfortunately um, uh, you know it's uh, it's something that we need to educate people and hopefully uh, we're paying attention and uh, uh, and we're all doing our part because if everybody does our part then all of a sudden that will uh, you know add up to a great part and uh, and hopefully lower the risk of, uh, of an outbreak there. So with that being said, uh, let's begin uh, today's sessions.
Obviously, Friday, July the 3rd. Um, again, time goes on uh, without doubt. Uh, I'm Jim Fleeler. Uh, you know, what I say it is I've been around around 40 years and I learn every single day in this pandemic and COVID-19 and COVID-2 and, and uh, all of the viruses and bacteria make us a better, smarter, more intelligent manufacturer. Uh, it really does make us better. Uh, listening to our customers makes us better. Um, just by simply learning what are your challenges and things and I mean and that's really what we drive home there and we'll continue we will never stop learning we'll never stop sharing education with you so so that's really a little bit of the mandate that we have in our whole sales team and our Charlotte resources and things there so you can become uh, you can rely on that actually this week we're going to talk about obviously cleaning protocols to lower the risk of an outbreak it is weekly we plan on continuing these uh, we just started floor care programs last week and really how it related to COVID-19 this week we're going to continue with that and um, we're going to add the interim element on there which is really making sure you maintain a foundation uh, also address labor efficiencies and lower the risk of an outbreak as it relates there and then also um, as it comes there I mean we need to teach people how to safely operate the uh, equipment that's involved with floor care and the most intimidating one is the rotary or swing machine there and we've got a YouTube video in today's uh, content here that'll really just show us the safety protocol and teaching somebody who really only operated a machine one or two uh, times there and then of course we've got our open mic with us with uh, and myself there towards the end so I'll just review this one slide because it really uh, drives home the purpose and the need to maintain uh, floor care programs and, uh, and the purchase of floor finish. And, and again, it's just not about a clean, shiny uh, image of your facility, although that's important. That's not really the main reason. You know, we know clean and shiny cells, but slip and fall, reducing that opportunity, that chance, and reducing any kind of injury to people, whether it's visitors, occupants, or employees. Uh, I mean, we we, we owe it to our, you know, uh, to our world, to our, uh, to our co-workers and that to reduce that risk. Also, it saves hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars in litigation as well. A floor finish, also a coating there will protect um, your uh, investment in capital substrates, your flooring, premature replacement. There isn't a lot of money. There's not going to be more money coming out of this post-corona when we do come out of it, when we come out of it. Uh, you know, so the money isn't going to be there to replace flooring and carpeting and all of those cheap goods and things there so so floor finish is your cheapest way least expensive way I guess I should say to to um, to uh, make sure that you do your part uh, improving indoor air quality and lowering dust levels I mean who wouldn't want to do that in a facility just by maintaining you know, a couple of coats of, uh, of finish and sealer on your floor, uh, eliminating that airborne debris, uh, smoother surfaces, easier to remove bacteria, viruses, back, you know, and uh, and really um, dust particles on your floors as well. You know, and and really, so so that's why we do it, right? You know, so if we can reduce that transferring throughout your facility, that's what we're here to do. So it just isn't about clean and shiny. There's all of those other things involved as well. So we'll get right into the maintenance element elements involved there we talked about pre-routine and routine and interim and partial restorative and complete restorative last week this week we're going to focus on interim which is really spray buffing burnishing and uh, that repairs and prolongs the life of your floor care program decreasing costs and increasing traction and that's the one that's the most complicated and that's the one that if you're ever going to be pressured by budgets and time um, that may just do the job particularly particularly in this era to help prevent maybe partial and maybe complete restorative. So that's why we thought we would start there and we have that educational uh, video starting uh, a little bit later. So the COVID-19 benefits and floor finish, how do they relate? I mean, a smoother surface is easier to clean, it's easier to remove contaminants, and it's easier to remove soil and the, and the potential host areas for bacteria and viruses. You remember I showed you the sponge last week, okay? This one here is like a bare tile, right? With all kinds of nooks and crannies, pores, things like that, where dirt, debris, liquid spills, bodily fluids, it doesn't matter what it is, get it saturated and they'll absorb. And if it's organic in nature, it will grow. 
similar to what grout will do in a washroom area around moisture areas right so floor finish is basically i mean it's a, it's just like this okay it's a sheet of a, of a polymer that goes over top that gives you a smoother surface and it gives you a barrier and protection against those organic materials and potential risks uh, absorbing into your tile therefore making it safer that's what floor finish does for you. So I always want to review those benefits to you, right? Uh, floor care, most labor intensive task. We've showed this time and time again. I always have my little, my little dollars here and it doesn't matter what North American currency here. But I mean, if you think about it, okay, everything we do, everything we buy is less than 10% of your spend. Okay, 90% is attributed to labor. Floor care is by far your most labor intensive task and it can make up to about 67% of a facility spend easily. So why should we spend so much time talking to you and educating you about floor care programs? Because it can save you a major amount of budget. It can give you a better looking facility, a safer facility. We can lower the risk of an outbreak doing it there. Uh, it's just there, I could go on and on for 10 minutes on the reasons why to do it slip and fall litigation workers compensation all of those particular things it's there so keep that in mind right once again we have the golden dollar with the golden bill. I believe last week's winner was Colin Lynch, uh, and I believe he's in the town of Ajax. I know that uh, that bill has been uh, sent. Uh, I don't think he has it quite yet because I think I just sent it yesterday. But the first one that actually uh, writes in and says, I would like that golden $100 bill, uh, which has no cash value, by the way. <laughs> I have to declare that. But I mean, it's just a great thing for presentations and things like that. So it's available again. So let's just get right into the product here that'll help you get the job done with this interim maintenance. So, so uh, this is some industry education on repairing surfaces and floor care, floor coatings are there to take the beating of foot traffic and carts and, and all kinds of wear and tear and moisture and weather conditions and things. It's there to protect uh, your floors. It's just like a coat of wax that you would have on a car fender. The, the, that's there to protect you from the bird droppings and UV and little minor scratches and all those kinds of things saving the paint. Well, floor finish is very similar. It actually prevents the black marks and the, or it takes the beating of the black marks and the scuff marks and the scratches and all of the staining and things protecting your floor. So that's what it does. So, so really spray buffing is the term we're referring to. It's part of the interim process for floor care programs. It's been a long standing process. Uh, I've seen lots of uh, magic formulas produced over the years where a custodial janitorial individual will take a, uh, some floor finish, they'll add a little bit of detergent, they'll add a little bit of water, they'll come up with a real wizardry combination and try it on floors and end up going backwards probably sometimes or causing slip and fall or really wearing the finish out or whatever. So it's best to use a specific spray buff not watered down less is better you'll want to apply a fine mist or a stream to reduce smearing it's ready to use at a trigger head or decant out of the out of the gallon container into a trigger bottle with a with a with a trigger head on top it removes black marks and scuff marks and scratches and you're going to see in the video exactly how easy they come out there it instantly improves the foot traction it prolongs the life of that floor care program it reduces your cost of labor and you can also burn burnish ES86 plus right it's not a question at all there so so basically what I'm saying here is you've got a product here that is very inexpensive the mileage out of the, the out of a quart bottle or 946 mil bottle is 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 thousands and thousands of square feet so it's really I mean it's down to a penny a square foot or less to get it so it's not a question of whether you can afford it or not let's use the best product to do the job what does it do it prolongs the life makes it look a real nice blended uniform finish that is safe for anybody there and very easy for anybody to do. Now, also for education, there is uh, people that actually demand a higher gloss and to do that, you need a burnishing process. That also repairs the surface and the whole works. It's part of the interim process on floor care programs. It's long standing as well. It's best to use a specific burnishing cream though, and that's ES94 plus. You'll see it right on the screen there. And really what that is, is, is a, it's all, it's cream. It's actually from the cosmetic industry there. And if you think about what you need to do is put a three inch strip on the floor. 
Now that is, think of your toothbrush being three inches long. So I'm going to just put a, a bead on there three inches long and I'm going to blend that in with my uh, burnishing pad and away it goes. You'll see that in the video as well. It's easy to use, it's ready to use, it removes black marks, scuff marks, the whole works. And what the best thing I like about ES94 is number one, if you're in a gymnasium any sort of sports facility of any sort and you've got any kind of coating on that floor doesn't matter if it's an oil base or a water based urethane a water base it doesn't matter what it is if you have an issue with slip and fall or the coach complains or the students complain about it being slippery you can instantly burnish that give it a dust mop first apply that three inch line that's good for about 800 or 1000 square feet and you are good to go you'll clean you'll blend you'll remove scuff marks black marks but instantly you'll increase the coefficient of friction by about 25 percent the coach wants the squeaky shoe syndrome it'll produce squeaky shoes so instantly you have an employee wellness response and just think of yourselves as first responders to do that right it'll prolong the life of the floor care program but i will caution you this is cream is for burnishing only it is not for spray buffing okay so that's the two products that you have there so now what we're going to do here is we're going to show you the video uh, it will go through how to safely operate a swing machine it'll also then show you you how to spray buff properly and then how to safely operate a burning machine burnishing machine sorry and then how to apply the ES94 uh, plus there so we'll be back in a few minutes Good afternoon everybody, Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Charlotte Products in Canada. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, again today. Uh, we've been hosting our series of webinars for lowering the risk of an outbreak since COVID-19 has, uh, has become uh, you know, uh, rampant globally around the world. Uh, we have been talking recently about, um, about floor care and uh, how it relates to COVID-19 as a matter of fact. And what we do know is that if you're uh, really uh, maintain a coating on the floor of a sealer and finish you're actually sealing those pores therefore taking away that breeding zone or, or uh, cross-contamination zone um, for bacteria and viruses to grow so that's what that's how it's relative there um, summertime is here right now uh, it's actually the most popular time to uh, to redo your floors whether you've got a deep strip or deep scrub or maybe you can get away with a buff or a restoration process and we're going to cover that all of those steps in the next couple of weeks so really this is part of the interim maintenance um, today we're going to operate the rotary swing machine this is by far the most popular machine in our industry today but it's the most intimidating to operate and it also is the one that comes with the highest chance of an injury because it really relies on torque and balance so today what we've we've got Jennifer Meek with us here she's our director of marketing for Charlotte in North America and we're going to she's only operated a machine once I believe in your history uh, so we're going to go through the proper steps of how to train her to make sure she operates it in a safe manner Manner, not only protecting ourselves but anybody that's actually in the area so you can see she's got her PPE on because we are going to actually apply spray buff and things like that so let's just get started with the operation and how you would train somebody on operating the machine okay so Jen the first thing you know is that with spray buffing we always use a red pad that's the color of choice for basically giving us the right blend and applying the spray buff solution and really getting rid of the scratches and the black marks right obviously round obviously like a car tire uh, on your car if it's out of balance it's going to shake and carry on so it's very important that you place it in the center of your pad holder so if we look here this is our pad holder here you can see the grips here that it basically grabs the pad and stops it from swinging okay and the easiest way to do it is just to look at it like this you know uh, make sure that it's fairly centered just give it a light little step there and it's grabbed a hold of it so what happens is some people put the pad down and then lower the machine and it's out of round and then they spend the rest of the time doing that okay and you'll see it's a clutch plate now one thing from a safety standpoint you will notice that we do not have the machine plugged in the wall that is very important when you're training somebody because we've had instances where people have hurt themselves and hurt others around because they're just not quite sure handle how to handle a machine. They panic a little bit. It is plugged in. We can have an injury. So let's when we're training, we want to make sure we don't uh, uh, we, we, we avoid that risk. OK, so placing the pad holder on, you can see here there's three lugs. OK, right here. 
These three lugs match there, so Jen, maybe you want to take that and see if you can, uh, you can put that on there. It's just simply line the lugs up, give it a twist. Okay, other way, backwards. Okay, and you're on, that's it. So that locks on. It's, a, it's an elevated cam mechanism that applies tension to it and that's as easy. Same thing for reversing, just give it a little bit of a hit on the outside and it comes off and it's very, very easy. So mount. And it's turning, does that give you an indication that it's on? Yeah, ab absolutely, okay. So then we can safely lower our machine. Now what I'd like you to do is to adjust the handle and the way you do that is you just loosen that, okay. And then I want you to take and put it right about here on your body, okay? Right like so, that's where, it, uh, just a little bit lower. And what I want you to pay attention to here is really this housing the hood, okay? You want that to be more level than offset like that. So lower your handle a little bit more, okay? Lock it in like so, okay? Yeah, it's just a simple, and then lift up a little bit, okay? And that's, so you can see, we're not totally flat, but we're pretty flat, right? So there's something you need to remember here. It's the term LLRR. If I want this machine to go to the left, I wanna lower the handle a little bit, okay? If I want it to go right, I wanna lift up a little bit. So just practice that a little bit. So left, yep, yeah, then the machine's going to go to the left. Okay, and raising, it is going to go to the right. And that's what you need to remember when you're getting close to edges or walls or furniture or something, if you wanna go in the, so left is lower the handle, raise, or going to the right is raising the handle. And the machine will stay pretty well stationary if you've got this flat or level, I would say, okay? So that's very simple. So what I want you to do, are you comfortable there? Yes. Okay, the other thing I do is, is people will stand, okay, and they'll stand holding the machine like this with both legs parallel, right? That is not the way to do it. What I'd like you to do is offset your feet sort of in an L, have the handle here, and then you can see you've got a little bit of, uh, um, you know, control over it. You've got some, some muscle tone into it and the whole work, so you've got some resistance. So it's not gonna push you back. You have no leverage this way. You've got all kinds of leverage this way, okay? And always operate it with both hands and, and away you go from there. So are you comfortable in that position there? You can see you're fairly level. If you wanted to adjust it a little bit more, it would probably be a little better, but I think you're good that way. Okay, and don't hold it out like this. Your arms will wear out long before the machine wears out. Okay? My arms and my elbows into my body. Yeah, you're good just like that. Okay? So with that being said, are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay. So take your hands off of it for me, because I'm going to plug it in. Okay? So I remember always safety. I'm going to plug it in. Okay? And we are powered. Now, before you touch it, I'm going to be at the front of the machine. Right, so if anything goes wrong, what I want you to do is release these two levers, hang on to the handle, release those two levers, it'll stop, but I have control of it at the front, so there's no issue whatsoever, okay? So, so if you wanna get in position there, I'm gonna hang on to it like so, and when you're ready to go, you can just, there's a safety release on the handle that you have to click, and then pull your lever, and it'll go, okay, right? So you see, I've got a hold of it for you. How does that feel? It feels good with you holding it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's what you go through because it's the most intimidating machine uh, that we have in our industry, but it's very ne it's a necessity. You can't go without this machine, uh, so everybody has to learn how to operate it. So just, just sort of, um, you know, I've got a hold of it here, so just maybe move it a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Okay, you see how easy that responds? And you've got your hip there, good, so that's good. So are you comfortable with me letting go? I, I think I am, except this cord is bothering. The cord is bothering? Okay, well why don't I come and move the cord, okay? One thing about the cord is you never ever put it up over your shoulder, okay? You always wanna keep a hold of it once you get uh, operating the machine comfortably with one hand or just keep aware of it where it is on the floor, okay? So you can see there, you've got a pretty good handle on that machine. So just move it over a little to the right. See how easy it moves? A little to the left. And then a little bit forward. Push, walk forward with it. That's perfect. 
slow movements, safe movements, not big movements on the handle up and down. I recommend everybody just learning in this fashion, just to take it easy. So that's how you really safely operate a swing machine. That's uh, pretty comfortable now. Okay, our next step here, we're gonna actually do spray buffing techniques. So, so if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to us there. We're here to help you. But that's how you safely operate a swing machine. Make sure where you're done, you remove the pad, you put the handle in the upright position, wipe down the cord, make sure it's unplugged, and then remove your, uh, uh, your PPE from there. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna pry, uh, do a spray buffing. Uh, basically what spray buffing does is it's got a little bit of a detergent mixed with a little bit of a polymer uh, in there as a matter of fact and, um, and it's a spray through a trigger head on the floor and basically blending in the finish. So what it does is it actually removes scuff marks, black marks, uh, blends the finish to give you a nice uniform uh, shine. This uh, spray buffing has been around in the industry for years and years and years. It is a relatively, it's a slower process than burnishing, but if you don't have a burnisher, it actually does it for you uh, very easily, and it'll actually prolong the life of your floor care program, uh, saving you labor efficiency, so it is good. What we have today is our Enviro Solutions ES86 Plus. That's our spray buff solution. Comes in 946 mil or one gallon or 3.78 liter containers uh, as well, and it's ready to use to go. So let's put my glasses on. If you look at the floor there, you can see we've got a few scuff marks there. Some people, you can't wash those out with a mop head, but you can, you should be able to spray buff those out. So let's just simply operate the machine, okay? And you spray a little bit down, and let's just see if this actually works. Okay, so what you can see is I've gone over one nice pass. I'm still remaining hanging on with both hands on the machine. So I can just simply go back, blend it in, and you'll notice I haven't used very much of the spray buff at all. If you use too much, you'll actually get into uh, smearing, and we don't want that. But what you can see is I can just go back and forth, building a very nice gleam, very inexpensively, and you can see I've gotten rid of all of those scuff marks and black marks, blended it in. No need to deep scrub, no need to deep strip. Labor efficiencies, cost savings, maintaining that foundation, which will help lower the risk of, uh, of an outbreak uh, with any COVID-19 bacteria or viruses from embedding in the pores. Easy step. Let us help you with that anytime we're available for you. Thank you. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, to now we're gonna talk about electric burnishing, which is uh, referred to as high speed. It'll be anywhere from 1,000 RPM up to 2,000 RPM. We have Jennifer Meek with us here again today, and uh, she's learning how to operate uh, equipment in a safe uh, manner as well. Uh, so you'll notice the first thing, Jen, we have the cord unplugged again. Okay, you did really well with the rotary swing machine. This one's actually easier to run. It's almost like your lawnmower at home where you would just basically go back and forth, but it turns at a high RPM. So if you take your pad, that's a natural hair uh, pad, okay? It'll be made up of certain fibers that are, that are built to give you gloss. You have to knock the center punch out, okay? And then you'll notice you have a ring here, a holder ring. Right, and I want you to install that center it around this ring as, big, as good as you can. Okay, again, making sure that it's centered properly. That's pretty good. You got lots of aggressive teeth that hang on to it, and that just twists on clockwise. Hold the pad from turning. A little bit of pressure. There you go. Okay, make sure it's good and tight because you don't want it coming off at any kind of high RPM and you're good to go. That's all there is, you know, to operating that machine. So you can go around the back of the machine now and lift it up, okay? And this, this particular one is a Karsher model. It's one that we have to, we're using in our training center. You notice the cord's out of the way, but again, not up over your shoulder. I just want it safely around where you understand where it is and it doesn't become a trip hazard, okay? And that's with time, you'll figure it out. So how you actually lower the handle is a little pedal on the back, Okay, and they'll all vary, by the way. 
Some will have an adjustment collar on the handle or whatever. And this is a spring-loaded handle, so there's no position that you lock it in like you did the swing machine. So it'll work on, uh, it'll, it'll work really on the momentum that vacuums it down or sucks it down. So that's your safety release. And then your levers, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. And why don't you just go ahead, I'm gonna plug that in. Do you want me to come around the front of the machine just in case before you do that? Okay, so hands off correctly. I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, so there shouldn't be too much problem because it's not gonna to wanna to go left or right. It's just gonna to wanna to go straight. So why don't you go ahead, I'm right here, and you start it up, okay? And you notice as you walk ahead, the front of this one comes down, okay? And just go back and forth a couple of times. I wanna make sure you're comfortable with that. So what you can see, and maybe head over here to the, uh, a little to the right, okay? Over where there's nice amount of finish there. Easy machine to operate. Not a problem at all. That's all there is to running a burnisher. Very quiet. What you'll notice without anything, we're getting a really nice gloss out of that and that's what that's designed to do. So if you've got any finish down that you've top coated or just uh, uh, done a deep strip, you always wanna wait 24 to 48 hours for the finish to cure before you burnish it. And then once you do that, it'll actually make it a little bit harder and give you a lot more gloss at the same time. So relatively easy to operate, okay? Make sure you pay attention to where your cord is at all times. You've got your wet floor signs in the vicinity, which is great. It's quiet, it's a very quick process, and look at the gloss you're getting there. See, for someone operating for the first time, you're already getting exceptional results. Way to go, thank you. Okay, so we've just uh, taught Jen how to safely operate the uh, electric burnisher. Uh, relatively easy to do, uh, as long as you've got your PPE in, around the room um, and uh, you're aware where your plug is, you've got a new pad and it's centered, you're really good to go. It's fairly effortless. There's no torque on it. Uh, there's not fatiguing to employees, uh, no matter what size they are or what muscular strength they are. So it's a real nice uh, program. Uh, if you do have one of these in your closet or in your facility, I highly recommend you bringing it out in the closet and utilizing it. Some of them didn't really get used as much, but we have some amazing products uh, like this one we're going to talk about today is our Enviro Solutions 94 Plus. This is an actual burnishing cream. It's from the cosmetic industry, as a matter of fact, and uh, it's a safer choice for you. What I like about this is you apply just like toothpaste. It has a flip tap and a tab, and you would put down like a, a three inch strip, which is good for about a thousand square feet. So it's very economical. This bottle, as a matter of fact, is good for about a hundred to 200,000 square feet of coverage, uh, which by the way, is very, very economical. So what I also like about this cream is you're not wetting the floor and you're not having that potential of a slip and fall. It's a dry process is what we call it and uh, it's really unique in the industry. So let's show you how it works, okay? So you can see my floor down here. We just did this little demo and glossed it up, but we're gonna do the whole floor if you look at the floor. So what I am going to do is I'm just gonna put a three inch strip and you can see that this is transparent, okay? And it's just like clear toothpaste, I guess, would be the best. And what I wanna do first is I wanna blend it into my pad, okay? So I haven't had this on my pad before, so I basically wanna work it in the pad. Okay, and what you can see is I'm getting a really, really nice gloss instantaneously and there's one, so you can see everywhere I go with that machine, depending on your lighting, that I'm getting a really, really nice blend. Now, one thing that I would I tell you is on a brand new pad, what I've done is I've worked that a little bit now, but the three inches has absorbed in the pad, so when it is a brand new pad, you always wanna take and then apply three inches and then you're good to go. So then that way, it's not all, not all absorbed in the pad, okay? So I've got another three inches. And then I'm good to go for about a thousand square feet. So let's just do that. Okay. And you'll see that this is really coming up to a nice gloss. This floor has not been recoated in years. It's an experimental floor. I can go in any direction that I want. 
and I just get a nice uniform gloss, okay? That's ES94+. Plus. Now, let me tell you this, the best thing about this. Slip and fall is a common issue in facilities. Whether it's a wood floor, whether it's a vinyl floor, no matter what. If you have any kind of coating on any one of these flooring substrates and you have a slip problem, this is your best friend. This is the way that will allow you to respond instantly and eliminate the risk of slip and fall or at least lower the risk of a slip and fall. Say you're in the school board, you've got the students playing badminton or, or uh, floor hockey or, or basketball or whatever and the coach complains there's a slip. Well, you need to fix it fast. You can come out, give the floor a very quick dust mop and apply this with your burnisher and instantly correct the slip and fall issue. In fact, you will increase the coefficient of friction by about 25%. Let me show you this. You see the gloss? Okay. Feel that? That just stops. Okay, that's the squeaks. They like the squeaky look. The coaches always like it. Instantly, you can feel that. I'm not leaving any scuffing behind. I have corrected that problem instantaneously, lowering the risk of a slip and fall. Why do you use ES 70 or 94 plus? Simply because of that alone. The gloss is there, extending life of your floor care program, reducing the cost of labor, giving your image uh, a professional image in your facility. That's why you deal with us and that's why you use Enviro Solutions. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully you found those uh, videos uh, educational. That was uh, Jennifer Meek, that's our Director of Marketing, and uh, I think she ran a swing machine maybe once before in her life, but, uh, but believe me, everybody should be taught in that manner. Uh, just simply because it is a dangerous machine, it can get out of control. I've seen them go through glass showcases, I've seen them go through drywall, I've seen them almost take people out that are in the close proximity. Just do the little things correctly and practice that safety because it will severely injure somebody. Um, I didn't have it quite before, but there's the ES94 Plus for those that uh, want to take a look at the size of the bottle. That actually is good for about 100 or 200,000 square feet, as a matter of fact. Uh, one side effect of this, if you're getting a little bit of premature scuffing, you're using too much, right? So what I suggest to get rid of that scuffing is don't use this for a day or two, just simply burnish it with a natural hair pad. Any kind of scuffing or smearing will go away and it'll instantly, uh, and that's just an indicator that you're gonna use too much. And you probably will in the beginning because it's hard to gauge a three inch line of paste that's gonna do 800 or 1,000 square feet. Uh, as far as the 86 plus, it's ready to go right out of the box for you there as well nice smell to it nice amount of detergency and you're all set so that's really the two products that you uh, that you would use uh, for those process you can see here i've added it here the part numbers are here the packaging is here uh eco logo approval on the es86 plus the burnishing cream is uh, recommended by safer choice uh, certified there i mean all to do with maintaining and prolonging the life of your floor care programs whichever method you have if you've got swing machines let Let's get them out and use them. If you've got burnishers, let's get them out and use them in the facility. Uh, and if it's my choice, any one of them would actually do fine. Whatever piece of equipment I have, that's what I'm going to use there. So uh, also, uh, when we switch, uh, I want to talk about disinfecting protocol because this still remains the number one question. There's even questions coming in today that basically are referring to, you know, what do I need to do? How do I know? What, what, what happens when I use a mister? Do I have to do all of these things? If you don't follow this protocol, you are not ensuring you are disinfecting properly. You're, you're just, it's basically a pass or a fail, right? Uh, however abrupt that seems, if you're not using a registered product, if you're not reading and understanding the whole entire label, if you're not diluting it properly, and it does not matter regardless of the method, whether it's a pump up sprayer, charge buckets, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, trigger sprayers, whatever, if you're not diluting it properly and, and applying it properly, pre-cleaning surfaces, respecting the dwell and the contact time, and then doing a potable water rinse on food contact uh, surfaces or around preschool toys, whatever it may be where children are mouthing, whatever it is, then you're failing. 
right? So this here is probably, if we talk about the ramp up that's happening uh, with with uh, COVID-19 and all of the, uh, you know, all of the, the illness and the deaths that are happening, if every single one of us paid attention to this slide right here, and we, we changed our ways, this would go a long ways to making it a better, safer world, this particular one. And, and we talk about it every single week. And believe me, if you need help, reach out to us there. Uh, as always, uh, we put our webinars um, on online, uh, usually within a day after um, that we do them. When we do these every Friday, you can see, uh, you know, the, uh, the you w we've got all of our latest ones here. Uh, you'll see uh, tomorrow's, or sorry, uh, July third will be uh, will be on there as well. And I've added a page here because just below uh, where those tabs were and the dates and things, I mean, we've added this pandemic pandemic cleaning and checklist here. These are all click on links there that you can get a pandemic flu checklist for K to 12 schools. You can download the washroom cleaning checklist. You can, you can look at what the CDC uh, get, recommends for reopening guidelines. You've got pandemic preparedness for businesses. You've got cleaning checklists and what disinfectants to use, plexiglass care. All of these things are here for you. And we don't charge for them. They're here. They're there for you to utilize in the whole work. So they're right below, as a matter in fact, I'll back up exactly where our, we our webinar recordings are. So they're right on the same page below. So we thought we'd point that out as well and go from there. So, so before we get to our questions here, a, a little summary. I mean, this is our 17th webinar. We hope you're finding them educational. I can, we can tell that you must because the registrations continue to increase. Thank you for your valuable time. We're going to continue them. The next one is Friday, July the 10th. <laughs> Geez, pretty soon we'll be talking about snow shovels or something at this speed there. Obviously, anything to do with COVID-19 up hopefully we can get a handle on the uh on the situation in the world and maybe stop the spread uh, as well and make it safer there. And we're gonna continue with our floor care labor efficiencies there and instructional demos. I think next year, next week, we're going to talk about um, restoration and how to easily do that with just a mop bucket, flap mop, uh, burnisher, swing machine, whatever it may be, and a product there that's fairly new that can really help you there. So so now uh, joining me for questions is, uh, is Ask with Williams as always. and. Uh, uh, and I, be, I believe we've got a flood of questions again there, so uh, so we, we will go there. So, Asquith, you're in the room here somewhere. Okay, excellent. Uh, Asquith, oh, jeez. <laughs> I, almost, I didn't know my uh, chairs, uh, <laughs> the wheels were so were so easily rolled here or whatever, you need, you, but uh, you need, you need Mr. IT breaks. Director, do we have questions today? Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. More questions just when you thought you were... Uh, <laughs> I thought I got away from those questions. Have, no, 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 no. It's, uh, you know, another Friday at uh, 1 o'clock, and, uh, and these questions keep pouring in there. How was your uh, Canada Day? Uh, day? Well, it was a lovely, lovely holiday. Yeah. Uh, it was a nice break. Yeah. Uh, it was good. We had a good time. Good. Family, just family. Yeah, okay. In your bubble? In my little bubble. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you didn't watch the news because it's nothing but bad news on there. And we've been talking about it today in our webinar. The spikes yes. are going crazy yes. and they're shutting yes. uh, people back down again, and uh, which we sort of predicted they were going to. Yeah. But, um, uh, in the video today or in the webinar, we're talking about people like, listen, it's up to you. You're in the mirror. It's, it's the person yes. in the mirror is responsible and accountable. And, um, and really, uh, it's quite a serious situation. And, uh, you know, we, again, we want to say this. The bugs don't fly. Right. They don't walk. Mm -hmm. They don't drive. Mm -hmm. It's us who carry the bug. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So what we should be doing is just practicing social distances. You cannot do it. Wear a mask, wash your hands frequently. Simple as that until we get a vaccine. Yeah. Then, you know, we just have to sacrifice that moment in time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be better off for that, yeah. really. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. the economy will, will come back. You know, things will move. Yeah. You just got to practice that, you know. Yeah, for sure we do. Yes. And, uh, well, that's one of the reasons why we're in our larger studio here is simply yes. because there were four of us in that other room and it was getting a little right on the edge, mm -hmm. right? And let's mm -hmm. be safe, right? So let's that's uh, that's good. And yes. the air conditioning works really well in this yes. room, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So let's get to our questions here. Uh, first one here is a Geo. 
thank you for showing us how to operate a swing machine. We have had uh, we have several of these throughout our buildings that we can repurpose and put back to work. Are we allowed to use your video to share with our team to train them? Well, I think that's the whole point of this video. You know, you, you want to use this video as an education tool. Yeah. So, uh, by all means, uh, use the video. Yeah, Geo, by all means. That's why we're there. Mm -hmm. We say it time and time again every single week. Look, yep. we're here to educate you and transfer that knowledge. Yes. And yes. by all means, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's just good common yep. sense to do mm -hmm. that. Um, another, he's uh, followed it up here. Do you have distributors uh, that have a sales or service team that could come to our buildings and train our custodians and check our equipment one day? Um, and I think you, I think all of us. Yeah, yeah, all of absolutely. our customers will have uh, just you know uh, people service techs who can do this job. Yeah, all across North America, uh, mm -hmm. by the way, Geo. So so anywhere, uh, whether in California or you're in Florida or if you're in uh, Timmins or if you're in uh, uh, Delta BC, it doesn't matter. Anything anywhere. in between uh, yes. in there. So yes, we do. And we'll be um, happy to serve you. Yeah, right? for sure. Here's Patty. Mm -hmm. I have a slippery gymnasium floors from time to time, and the gym teachers complain. Would either ES86 or ES9 94 plus solve my issue and increase the traction for students. Um, I think we covered that in today's uh, video, actually, mm -hmm. um, and the 94 plus there. Yes. If you're burnishing, Patty, this is definitely what you want to use. That three-inch line blended into the pad, you're good for about 800 or 1,000 mm -hmm. square feet. And you know what, Asquith, I don't know how much experience you've had with this on the floor, but the shine's amazing, and your shoes give you that basketball coach squeak, you got as it. a matter of fact, yeah. instantaneously, yes. as a matter of what fact. What that so. does, that raises the uh, static coefficient of friction significantly and uh, you'll see that yeah you, you can use uh, a tester before and after and you'll definitely uh, see that yeah that's yes. that's for sure so she can use that and mm -hmm. if you don't have a burnisher you can use uh, the Enviro Solutions ES86 plus yes. uh, that's the spray buff here it's ready to use and and that we used in the demo and that instantly took out the black marks and scuff yes. marks and really yes. gives a nice shine and it, it too increases the coefficient of friction not to the extent of this but but close for sure so it either is. one is good for you and that's a great question Patty yes so here's Stanley is the ES94 product uh, uh, ready to use and how exactly do I use it I'm confused with the three inch line maybe I'll explain that <laughs> okay well, you just uh, went, you know you yeah, just talked yeah, about that yeah you for can, sure yes uh, we talked about it there Stanley uh, but I mean it's a, basically a flip cap okay here and uh, so it's a flip cap and it's just like toothpaste only think of your toothpaste your toothbrush three inches long and you're just putting a bead down as if it was your toothbrush mm -hmm. only on the mm -hmm. floor mm -hmm. blending it in with your pad a little bit here and there and that's good for about 800 to a thousand square feet right you know so definitely ready to use I want to make sure I cover his uh, his question here ready to use yes how exactly do you use it and then the confuse with the three inch line so hopefully and don't use use four inches or five inches or six inches because then it'll smear and you don't want that yes. and it's costly there. Less so, is better. Yeah, and Stanley, if you still have questions, give us a shout by any, by, uh, by, without doubt. Uh, here's Bobby, just to be certain to move the swing machine to the left. I push down on the handle slightly and it'll move that way and lift up and it'll move to the right and slow movements are safer. Bobby, to be certain, obviously, um, you've had your years of experience <laughs> on swing machines there, but just the handle, just slightly down, I'm talking... Very maybe, gently, yeah, very gently. Slow and gently. Very really gently. Lower, left, raise, right. Right, very simple, and if, uh, hopefully that came across on the camera right without being <laughs> opposite, because sometimes it does that. Uh, here's Megan. Uh, here you go, Asquith. I tried your clean cut stripper after last week's webinar. I gave it to two mm -hmm. teams. One team thought it was terrific and allowed them to deep strip one more classroom each shift. Imagine that. I'm assuming this is a school mm -hmm. of some sort. So, how many classrooms are in a school? If they could do one more, in the imagine the labor savings that's right. there yes okay so that's great and then the other team struggled but when i asked them how they diluted it they indicated they diluted it at about one to four which is what a traditional stripper is uh the message she says here she knows it works i'd like to pass along the fact that you need to follow the directions exactly and it'll work great any comments well, there ask i would say approximately one quart bottle in a five gallon uh uh, pail yep. of water, mm -hmm. cold water, and that should be a good indicator as to where you want to be. That's about exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think we've got a mop bucket here. 
Okay, we are, actually we happen to have our our clean cut yes, stripper. Yes, one of those. So basically, you're saying yes. fill this three quarters yes, full three quarters cold full water, cold the water, whole for content, that give it a stir give it around, a stir, you're done. Okay, simple so, as that. So, and obviously, her first team did it right. The second team went yes. back to the traditional way yes. of one to four yes. or whatever. There. Yes. So, and that's good. So imagine that. Okay, mm -hmm. if you had ten classrooms in a day and you did one extra, that could be 10, 20 percent more efficient. I mean, just mm -hmm. like that. Just right? like that. You know, which is amazing. And that's at what no we extra cost, Jimmy. At, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, here's Jane. I mistakenly bought hand sanitizer from a competitor last week. Jane, you have to have a word with Jane. Great price, terrible product. It smelled really foul. What mm -hmm. do they put in these formulas to make it smell that bad? Well, you're the hand sanitizer expert, Aspa. So Jane. Well, uh, well we we all you know this, <laughs> different types of alcohol. <laughs> we talked about different types of alcohol. Um, you know, I can. Oh, there so, you go. So, okay. You know, there is this. Yes. You know, which is made as we said from the heart. Mm -hmm. So there is no smell associated with this. Right. You know. Um, and essentially, what we need to do is uh, buy good, good quality stuff. We, you know, the, the ethanol that's used should be, you know, USP grade. Mm -hmm. um, it should never be industrial grade right. or technical grade. Right. It should be exactly what I just said. You know, uh, the alcohol here, you know, is uh, NGS. This is the top of the line, best alcohol ethanol that you can use and is that the what does ngs stand for is well that the natural grain spirits okay yeah right okay. and that's mm -hmm. that's that's what's here so okay. it's a very nice product doesn't you know it's yeah so it's, just, it's just a good product yeah so i, I yeah. think what you could say is uh, before you buy smell <laughs> I mean, I you say, know, take yeah, the top take off, the, smell yeah, it. If you yeah. smell tequila or petroleum or yep. vodka or w whatever, yes, yes, it's yes. instantly you're going to smell it's, like that. That could yes. be an irritant to the skin, and it, it could, may not be mm -hmm. the top quality product. Exactly. So, uh, but Jane here is so saying, look, at, she mistakenly did that. So hopefully that helps you there, Jane. Don't do that. Jane, again, Jane, get bad. back. This yeah. is a brand to buy. Yeah, okay? actually, this is a brand. Jane, I, you know what, Jane, if you want to uh, email us your contact information, maybe we can talk Ask Within to send in you a free uh, 500 mil bottle or something. Okay. Maybe we could we get out a deal. As well. Okay, we'll do so that. there you go. Here's uh, Vanessa. Does this sound true? I applied two coats of barricade sealer for the first time last week after your webinar. Then I applied two coats of Urias 98 floor finish. The overall gloss level is much higher than previously when they applied only four coats of ES98. Are we seeing things or is the combination of the two better? No, I think the combination of the two are better. You, the, the sealer basically uh, covers a lot of the pores um, a lot better um, than than a similar coat of floor finish, and of course, uh, when you know, I think last week you discussed how jagged microscopically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a tile would be, and um, you're basically trying to uh, smooth out those hills and valleys, yep. and uh, for better reflection. Yeah. Rather yeah. than refraction. Yeah. You know, when you've got things that yeah. you don't get that glass, right? Well, so, when, yes, it's When I did better. the sponge uh, demo, you know, was, a bare yes. sponge and then one wrapped That's in plastic, correct. obviously. Yes, yeah, yes. The same there. principle so, applies. So, Vanessa, you're right there. Mm -hmm. And plus, you'll have a floor care program that's much more durable. Um, than uh, much more mm -hmm. durable than what you're uh, currently used to. Mm -hmm. Here's Tanner. Do you have the good stuff, alcohol-based hand sanitizer, available in other sizes? Now, I know we have a Tanner <laughs> around here somewhere. I don't know if this is the same Tanner, but uh, ask what that's your question. <laughs> yes, we've got all the sizes. We, we have a 3.78 liters. We've got a 2 liter. We've got a 500 mil. Uh, and um, from time to time, we have uh, different volume declarations. Okay. So maybe next As week, what you do is bring in a bottle of each, and you do a show and tell. How's that? Okay. We'll do that. Okay. So we'll that's, that. uh, that's good. There. We'll do okay. that next Friday. Yeah. Good. Good. Here's Travis, which is July the 10th, by the way. I mean, can you imagine that? That's, Already. Yeah, that's scary. Here's Travis. Thank you for staying committed to us during this COVID-19 threat. Seldom does our world stop and say thank you. We appreciate your efforts from the entire team, Ask With and Jim. You two are fantastic. Oh, this is a good one. You two are fantastic sharing appropriate information that relates to almost anyone in any facility. Thank you. 
So that's Travis. There. Well, thank See? you, Travis. Yeah, that, appreciate that. Tra Travis, that means a lot. Uh, like it, uh, you you can never put a price tag or value on a thank you other than it's just the right thing to mm -hmm. do there. So thank you. Makes us feel good about what mm -hmm. we do. Here's Drake. I don't know if this is Drake, the movie star, or not the movie star. The this, rapper. This is this the, the rapper the, Drake? The songwriter, I guess. Uh, could be. I have a few older burnishers. No, probably not. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few older burnishers in our facility that are seldom used. I would assume I can bring them out of hibernation. Uh, put a new burnishing pad on them and then begin to use them with your ES94 plus cream. Will you cover any other steps related to floor restoration soon? Uh, yes, unless it, this may make a rap song. You know, I, I won't do it there because I embarrass myself, but there's some hey, words Jimmy, here. Jimmy, Jimmy the rapper. <laughs> no, that's one thing I don't do, but, but Drake, absolutely, floor restoration. Uh, we are covering it next week. We're going to do the ES95. Um, which is a mop on restoration okay. and burnish and and, uh, and buff and it's a real good a good product there so and it's fairly new and it's something that mm -hmm. look if you've got floor care in your facility you need ES95 it's right. a restoration cleaner absolutely there. so uh, here's ebony should I uh, should I wear a face mask everywhere I go outside my home and how do I keep it clean I think we had a similar question we a week that. or so ago I but think I think I think I think it's a not a bad idea to wear a, a face mask mm -hmm. outside of your circle, your little bubble, yes. is not a bad idea. Um, can hurt, and um, to wash it, as I said, wash it daily in just regular soap and water is, is would be fine. Yep. You, if you want to spray a disinfectant on it and then rinse it afterwards and let it hang dry, that's also good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't hurt to wear a mask. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Maybe when you wear a mask, you're really protecting me from you yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so you, you know you're protecting the others yeah, and if and everyone and did that we'll all be protected yeah. right and i think also to take uh, ebony here so mm -hmm. uh, one step further i mean when she comes home should she take that mask in the house or make, she hasn't asked that but i mean should she take that well you know Is it's it, it, could it, it bring it's, cross contaminants in well i think i think if there are any uh, viruses on the mask you know uh Provided, you know, she doesn't shake it out and so on. You know, you wash that quickly, you know, yeah. efficiently and hang to dry, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Wash your hands afterwards, yeah. of course. Yeah, I know we're in a regiment when we do go out, mm -hmm. very seldom, but when we have to, we mm -hmm. we come home and we've got the whole protocol down yeah, for yeah. washing your hands. Yeah, wash your hands. You know, thoroughly take, and yes. hand sanitizer yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kanika, boy, we got some interesting names this week. Kanika here. Mm -hmm. uh, what temperature of water should I use a, a floor stripper with, please? Some of my staff members that have deep stripped floors for many years say to use the absolute hottest water. You you can get out of the tap. Can your clean cut stripper work in cold water and will it keep the odor down if I do this? Absolutely. The cold water will keep the odor down. Um, you should use room temperature water. If You know, a lot of the uh, floor strippers and so on uh, uh, will have um, solvents, mm -hmm. hot water, s drive those solvents off, you're yeah. less efficient. Plus, you know, your personal protection in terms of yeah. you breathing these solvents in. So, I, you know, all in all, you should be use cool water. Yeah, cool. That. that we practice, we teach cool all the teach time, cool. um, and cool is uh, it's very effective. And that's mm -hmm. our strippers are designed mm -hmm. to work in that. Cool uh, I'm looking at the time here, and boy, we only got I only got one more here. So, um, it's a uh, um, here we are. Here's Faye. Will you cover deep stripping procedures and the PPE involved in the future? Yes, we will, Faye, without question. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca, I've saw you uh, show many different checklists for cleaning washrooms, etc. over the past month or so. Where can I find them? Are they free? I think we've covered that in today's uh, webinar mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is Nick. Uh, I see you advertising your ES98 Eco Logo floor finish on your website. Will it stand up to, uh, in a busy office tower building? What's the life expectancy if we maintain it? And does it work well with a deep, deep scrub Rico program? So that's Nick. Well. Well, I think uh, it will stand up. Uh, we've got good longevity on, on that. Good maintenance program will improve the longevity. And yes, yes, and yes to all the answers, all the questions there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, for sure. It, it's a very good product. Nick, uh, you know what, ES98, you're going to love it. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's 
absolutely stellar uh, performing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a high solids. It works well. It burnishes well. It repairs well. It mm -hmm. buffs well. I mean, it shines well. It smells very neutral, so you're not smelling mm -hmm. like a plastic factory right. through there and the whole works there. So, so again, with that being said, that's uh, that's all the time that we have. Uh, Asquith, uh, as always, thank you for uh, joining us again today, Friday, July the 3rd. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe that. Um, I'm just going to wrap up by saying saying, um, you know, hopefully the Canadians had a great uh, July 1st, and hopefully the Americans are going to enjoy a great uh, July 4th uh, tomorrow. Yes. Um, and, and uh, you know, look in the mirror. You're the one that can make it or break it for us. Mm -hmm. uh, if everybody does their part, we will go there. And you want to practice that social distancing, and I'll turn it over to you for final words. Well, you, you're going to be out um, this weekend for all our American friends. You're going to be out... Uh, you're going to, going to be uh, having lots and lots of fun. Keep washing your hands. If you cannot practice social distancing, wear a mask, please. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.